Hello everyone, Forex here. In this video, we'll be talking about conditions, their purpose in scripts, how to write and understand them properly, and how to form useful conditions for your scripts. I hope that we all understand the basic meaning of a condition, and we have an idea of what their main purpose is. They should serve us to delay executing of some code until certain requirements are met. A typical example, player has two tasks throughout the mission, but we want to give him the second task only after he's completed the first one. We are already creating a condition for the creation of the second task, it only happens if the player has completed the first task. In this entire video we'll be discussing different scenarios and we'll always be talking about a if-then statement, which is very commonly used in all scripts to execute some code only under a condition. However, there are more statements that require some condition, so you can definitely use this knowledge outside the if-then statement alone. Alright, the main thing that we need to understand here is how conditions work and what the game expects from us. If you have spent some time on the Bohemia's wiki pages, which I can only recommend, go there and familiarize yourself with some commands. You may have noticed that for each command listed there, there's a line return value. Many commands return different types of values and knowing what a command returns back is actually really useful for condition creating. The most important sentence of this entire video, a condition needs to return true or false, in other words a boolean value. And that's all you need to understand, however this sentence isn't all that much of a tutorial or help by itself, so I'm going to show you what exactly it means in scripts. A typical condition can only exist in these two states, true or false, as the requirements are either met or they are not. If you don't like talking about boolean values, a condition is a question that you can definitely answer with yes or no and no other words. So when writing a script, you need to ask questions with only yes and no answers. Is the player's character dead? Is he higher than 500 meters? Is he near the rest of his unit? Did he accomplish all other tasks? Is he running? All of these questions can be used as valid conditions for a script, as the computer can clearly say yes or no to them, and if it can say yes, then it will execute all the code in the then section, and if it says no, it either skips the entire structure or executes the code in the else section. All of the named questions can be easily transferred to SQF with the right commands. Let's have a look at them. Is the player's character dead is the first one? Well, we don't have a command that checks if a unit is dead, but we have a command that checks if they are alive. So that means not alive. Next question, is he higher than 500 meters? If you haven't seen my video on the game coordinates and the three dimensional axes, you can go watch it right now. I explain there in detail that a command get pos returns a unit's position in all three axes. As we all know, the third one, z-axis, represents the vertical position, in other words, distance from the ground. So all we need to do is to get the position of the player, pick the third element from the returned array, that's the one with the index of 2, and then compare it to 500. I'll stop for a bit over here because I want to show you what exactly is going on here. As you can see, we have used several different commands at once, and a comparison as well, so let's do this step by step. As we all already know, a condition as a whole must return true or false and no other value. So we must make sure that all the commands and operations together return such a value type. With get post player, we are getting an array of three elements that is definitely not okay for a condition. A command select picks an element from an array. We have an array, it's whatever the command get post returns. Each element of that array has an index, the first one has the index of 0, next one has 1 and the last one has 2. Because we want to know the player's height, we will select the third element, the one with the index of 2. Now get post player select 2 returns a number, which is still not good enough for the condition. However, we know that we can compare one number to another. And this operation will always return either true or false, because if we want to know if number A is bigger than number B, then we can get only two results. It either is bigger, and the answer is true, or it is not bigger, 
and the answer is false. So by comparing this number with 500, we are getting a solid question for the game and we are sure that it will answer either true if the player is actually above 500 meters or false if he is not. Such a condition is then valid and can be processed by the game. Let's move to the next one. Is he near the rest of his unit? Well that's a tricky question actually, the rest of his unit isn't a very definitive place, but we could for example ask if he is near the second soldier of his group. Again we need to make sure that the final result is true or false, so we'll measure the distance between the player and another soldier of his group and again compare that distance to the sum number, which we consider as being close enough. Is the player running is a fairly simple question, luckily we have several commands to use to form the question. I will pick two of them, a command vehicle which returns the name of the vehicle the player is currently in and the command speed which returns the speed at which the player is moving. My ideal condition in this case would be is the player outside of a vehicle and moving particularly fast? Because in that case he must be running, right? Well unfortunately we have two commands here, two commands that we can't really combine as in the previous examples, plus both of them need a comparison to some other value. Vehicle player returns the name of the vehicle the player is in and we need to compare that value to the player himself which indicates that player isn't in a vehicle at all. And we need to compare his speed to a number of let's say 10, so if he's moving faster than 10 km per hour he's definitely running. Well, we can see that each of these two conditions already returns true or false. Both the speed and the vehicle statements that we have here are already almost perfect, we just need to get them both into the condition. And for that we'll use a logic operator, I'm sure you have already heard of those before. For conditions we will need operators AND, OR and NOT. They can be each marked with their own symbols and serve us to join multiple conditions into a larger one that we want to evaluate. In our case we want both cases to be true, meaning that the player must be outside any vehicles and moving fast enough. We'll then use AND to connect both conditions into one and that also returns true or false. I'm fairly certain that you have seen how the logic behind AND, OR and NOT works, the tables with ones and zeros, if you haven't I recommend you looking it up or just pausing the video right now. With these operators we can join together potentially unlimited amount of smaller segments, each one of which must return true or false. Last example on the list here is the question, did the player accomplish any other tasks? Many missions can have an extra task near the end that just happens to reveal itself at the right moment when everyone expects to see the mission end. Well, we can check for other tasks with the command task state, which returns a string with the current state. We can then wait until all the return strings are succeeded, and that will mean that the player has completed all the tasks. But we also have a different option, our own variables. To keep things simple, I will make a variable of boolean type at the mission start and name it task1 completed. The initial value is false because at the start of the mission the first task isn't completed, that comes during the mission. Next I will make a trigger over this area and into the on activation box I will write task1 completed equals to true. That means once the trigger gets activated the variable task1 completed will change its value from false to true. And we can then check as always for some values in a condition. In this case we can ask directly for task1 completed. Because this variable always carries only either true or false, there is no need to add anything else, because if the variable itself is false, then the entire condition result is false, and if it's true, then the condition itself will return true as well. Now I can check for anything I want and mark any situation with just my own custom variables. As always there are plenty of scenarios where one method is better than the other, where something can't be used or needs more work than it actually seems at the start, but I think that as a general info about conditions and how they work, this should be enough for a while for you guys. So this is it for this video, I hope to see you all in the next one, comment, like and share and have a great day.